What is up, good people? It is I, Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy, today with another edition of The Scoop. And today, The Scoop isn't, for those of you who don't really know what I'm talking about with, with The Scoop, it's really just personal takes on things that I either love or that keep me up at night. And today, it's more about the stuff that keeps me up at night. A lot of our take on, on the litter issue and the waste issue just kind of makes me crazy. Let's first have a little perspective. In 1947, Ed Lowe, who had cats, loved cats, and had a neighbor who had cats, loved cats. But at that point, most all cats were either kept completely outdoors or they had some access to the indoors, but they were always going out, all indoor, outdoor. And, and a lot of them were working cats on farms, etc. And part of the reason for that was that there was no predictable thing to put inside the house to have cats eliminate into that w was able to sort of bridge that place between being okay with your cat being in indoors and not being okay because really I mean you could put some sand in the house in, in a box but the smell was terrible and and etc 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 Ed Lowe's neighbor asks him for some sand for her box she said that the sand had frozen that she had tried ashes from the fireplace but of course that made so that the cat tracked ashes all over the house so she said Ed do you have any sand and instead he gave her this sort of composite of clay that actually was able to uh soak the urine in and hold its weight in water, which was pretty cool. And that, my friends, was how the cat litter market was invented, 1947. In 2018, the cat litter market accounted for $3.9 billion in the US alone. Oh man, that's a lot of litter, right? And that's not even counting boxes and scoops and liners and automated blah blah and all that, right? But that's where I wanna start getting into my little scoopy rant for the day, because as we have gotten further and further away from Ed Lowe and his neighbor, we have been going further and further into, into our convenience part of it and our sort of aesthetic desires and, and, and the things that we are willing to put up with and not willing to put up in our homes. I'll tell you a quick story. I was uh, doing a consult years ago, I don't even know where this was to be honest with you, but I was in someone's house, huge house. I remember it was there There was this massive great room that you walk into when you walked into the house and an entire side of the house was this unbelievably beautiful picture window that looked out onto this, this forest. It was just breathtakingly beautiful. Well, here's the catch. The catch is that her drapes were drawn and the entire length of this wall about this high was cat pee. Like the, the, the curtain was yellow all the way across. And as I'm looking around the rest of this, this house, I'm like, I don't see any litter boxes, you know? And then I finally found them after I toured the house, they were, you know, stuffed in a bathroom somewhere or in the garage, wherever it was, I don't remember. And she had, you know, four or five cats. And I said, well, listen, I, I don't know if this is something you don't wanna hear or not, but I think you need to put litter boxes here by this window. And there could be a number of reasons why your cats need to have a litter box here, but they're clearly sending you a message. And she said, yeah, it's a non-starter. I said, well, well, you know, huh? <laughs> Why? She goes, because I do not want to come out and look at this window. One of the reasons I bought this house was this gorgeous, you know, view. And I'm not having it, you know, usurped by a litter box or two or three, because I think I recommended three litter boxes across this wall, at least to start with. And she said, absolutely no, non-starter. She wouldn't even put one. And I said, but you realize that you're probably making a choice, that you either put a litter box here or you have this yellow stripe going across the entire wall. Are you sure you don't wanna put a litter box here? And she just looked at me, looked at the wall. Yeah, no, okay. What I don't think sometimes we understand on a very basic level is, cats are doing us a favor. The idea of having a cat eliminate in, in this one place, in this box, when you're talking about an animal that is used to marking territory, very large swaths of territory with pee and with poop, covering, not covering, you know, telling other animals to buzz off, whatever it is, and now we're saying go in this box, and they're like, mm, no, okay, all right. And now we're all upset because we don't like where the box is. We don't like what's in the box. We don't like, and, and we, we keep sort of pressing these demands on, on the cats. It is not fair and I'm just tired of dealing with it. I, I, I'm just gonna put it out there. I am tired of having to advocate for the most simple need of a cat, 
which is to go somewhere to eliminate where they can bury and where they can walk away. And yes, they may kick a little bit of that litter out on the floor, or you know, they may wanna have it in front of that picture window or whatever, but every relationship is a compromise. And this is the compromise that we made with cats. One of the things I can't stand are crystals. I don't, I mean, think about it. If your cat had the choice outside to go and pee on top of a bunch of lava rock and to go in topsoil, what are they gonna pick? The idea of, of sending my cat, my cat only has this one place to go pee and we're using those crystals because they are more absorbent for us or they're more odor controlling for us. Once we start going to that place where it, it bothers the cat to step on it, again, we're asking them to come so far over to this side of things and, and just to do something that, that, again, it's a favor that they're doing for us. So those crystals make me crazy. Heavily scented litters make me just crazy. Think about it, when you can smell the deodorizer or the flowery scent of a litter when you walk into the room, that's great for you. You're like, oh, I don't smell pee or poop. Okay, I get it. Think about how sensitive your cat's nose is and they're sticking their nose into it and that's gotta be just, just gross. Those newfangled sort of inventions to make it more appealing for us, I just think that that's a slippery slope, you know? And, and speaking of that, I'm not a fan of those liners that we put uh, between the litter and the litter box itself. Uh, if you've ever gone and if you use those liners and you pick it up and you see that there's these small cuts all through the bottom of those bags, that's because your cat is trying to bury and scratch and they're getting their claws stuck in that liner. And, and anybody who's followed me for a long time knows that I'm not really a big fan of uh, those cabinets that we make for cats. So we don't have to look at their litter box. It's in a cabinet. Or have you not seen the litter box that is cut into the bottom of a, of a planter so that you can have like a palm tree over the top of your litter box so that, really? And no, I'm not a big fan of having lids on, on cat boxes. And one of the big reasons about that is, I mean, and this is the funny part, we are under the impression, or maybe we just say this to ourselves because we want it to be true, that cats need privacy when they're peeing or pooping. That's crazy. <laughs> Cause anybody who has seen feral cat Tom out there pooping in the garden, he does not have a shower curtain around him while he's doing that. He's just going. And whether you're putting a lid on the box or putting the, the box itself in a closet with a little cutaway so your cat can walk through the door, just imagine what it's like for your cat to get out of this sort of safe space and there's a dog's nose sticking in the opening, you know, or another cat who's waiting to ambush them outside that door, and or, or little kids who will just be reaching in. These are things that we think about and we go, yeah, but I don't wanna look at the litter box, man. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't wanna look at it. I don't wanna smell it. I don't wanna see it. Out of sight, out of mind. Now, and I know this makes, I'm sure this is gonna make a lot of you guys unhappy because a lot of you guys like these types of litter boxes, but the ones that are self-cleaning, the ones where your cat walks in, walks out, and, and hopefully a couple minutes later, it either flushes itself or cleans itself, you know, whether it's using water to flush it away, whether it's using those rakes to rake it into a little container. I just wanna know what is coming out of my cat so that I can help them if they are not doing well. Think about it this way, when you're walking your dog, which by the way, we have to pick up after our dogs. With our cats, we get to use a scoop. With our dogs, we actually have to go down there with a bag on our hand and pick it up. But for some reason, we're cool with that, you know? But for some reason with cats, when it's just scooping, we're not cool with that. And, they, and I'm staring at my dog right now because I'm gonna have to take you out to poop. And it, if, if we went for a walk right now and she were to poop and it was diarrhea or there was some blood in there or there was some blood in her pee or something, I know right away and we go to the vet. With our cats, if it flushes away and you don't know what your cat is eliminating day on day, and don't forget cats are masters at hiding their pain. It's, this is only for us. Whether it's six different types of scented litter just so you can match it with your favorite flower or whether it is pointy litter that makes your cats have to walk gingerly on it or hiding it under the car or in a cabinet or flushing it away or then, and here's where we get to the apex 
of my rant, which is toilet training one's cats, which was very popular for a while. And, and why am I that angry? Because maybe many of you guys were like, wait a second, I can toilet train my cat? You could try, but it's not cool. And it's not cool because if cats were meant to poop in water, they would have been doing it all the way along, as opposed to going in dirt and sand and covering. That is what is natural to them. And it is, I would dare say, necessary for their mental well-being. Getting a cat, a kitten trained to litter, it's something that's just like this for their moms. It's just, yep, this is what we do. It's almost in our DNA to do this. And yet we're going to go through these these really crazy training, you know, if you've never seen it before, it's a sort of training dish that goes over the top of your toilet bowl. And it's, it's first it starts with a lot of litter and then slowly less litter and less litter and less litter and then you take it away and then they're squatting over the toilet. This can take months and there's little to no guarantee that they're actually gonna do it. And every time you wanna use that toilet, you gotta take that whole thing off. What? So that you don't have to scoop litter? Getting a box with litter in it in my point of view, it should be unscented, smooth for them to step on. It should not have a cover on it. We shouldn't do the liners, whatever, just very, a box with the substrate in it and multiples of them around the house. In return, our cats are, gonna, are not gonna pee on things or act out in other ways and they're going to have a sense of mojo. So that's my rant, you guys. That's my rant from, from toilet training to the automatics to the pointy, to the smelly, to the hiding it away. I don't want to deal with the fact that poop and pee come out of my cat and, and they're in my house and I have to dispose of them. I only get upset about this because all of these things potentially set our cats up for failure in our eyes. That we do these things because they work for us and then our cats screw up and go outside the box and then we get mad at them and then our relationship tumbles down a very long hill. I'm not saying that we have to turn our, our entire home into a beach of cat litter just so that our cats are as happy as they possibly can be. But I do think that everything has to, I don't know, I, I think it, it has to come down to compromise. And whether that's with your cats or any other member of your family, compromise is one of the real cornerstones of any relationship. Take it with a grain of salt if you want. Um, but uh, hey, it's my channel, it's my scoop. Don't watch it if you don't want it. <laughs> I'm getting all punchy. Uh, I, don't, I gotta figure out how to end this. I've been going on for quite a while, I know. You were supposed to shut me up. I'm finding it interesting. How cat nerdy of me. That substrate keeps me up at night, but there you have it. Until next time, you guys, spread some love this week. Show it to your cats, show it to uh, any animal and any human you can because we need it right now in this world. We need all the love we can get. And until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you. Take care. Meow.